What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we're going to discuss five tools that you can buy to get your start in hardware hacking. I get questions a lot on Discord, YouTube comments, what should I buy Matt? I want to get into hardware hacking, don't have to buy a bunch of really expensive equipment in order to do that work that you do on your YouTube videos. Well, not really. I do have some higher end equipment, but I got my start with the basics and that's where I think you should start. So let's go over to the workbench and let's discuss that with the first thing that I tell everyone to buy that is not a tool. They'll say, hey, Matt, I want to buy a tool. I need to know what, you know, what kind of soldering iron am I going to buy? Um, what kind of multimeter do I need? And those are all good things and, and, and you do need those eventually. But the first thing I suggest people buy is a device to target their testing on. And so this may be uh, a really obvious point to some people, but some people get so caught up looking for the tool that's going to make them a hardware hacker. And it's not the tool that makes the hardware hacker, it's the thought process, it's the skills, it's the knowledge that you gain. And the best way to gain that knowledge is through repetition, right? It's, it's practice, it's doing something over and over again. And so I suggest that you try to find some really cheap Linux-based Wi-Fi routers or other IoT devices. Don't, don't target like an Amazon or Google, some Fang uh, tech company's device because those are going to be really hardened, lots of security. They're going to have bug bounty programs, right? Uh, they're going to be locked down. It's not going to be a fun time to learn. It might be fun if you are a veteran to, to go after a hardened target like that. But if you're getting your start, I suggest the places where you look are eBay, Goodwill, thrift stores, and e-waste bins if you have those at your, at your workplace. So those are places where you can go to get cheap or free electronics that you can take apart and there's no pressure because it costs you know nothing or not very much and you can break stuff, you can make mistakes and it doesn't matter. And that's how you're gonna learn this hardware hacking stuff. So I have uh, some links that we'll share at the end uh, to some stuff if you do wanna get stuff on Amazon where we can have some dirt cheap Wi-Fi routers that are sure to have uh, some exposed UART interfaces like this one does over on my desk. But I just have to talk about that. So. Back, back to the bench. So that was kind of the trick question. The first thing, uh, the first tool we buy is not a tool. We buy a device and then all the tools that we're gonna buy are going to center around how do I do stuff to this device? How do I create more attack surface on this device that I didn't have before just you know interacting with the device over the ethernet or over Wi-Fi with my computer? And so one of, the, one of the easiest interfaces that exist on an embedded system like that is UART. And so in order to get into this device, you can notice the first thing I had to do in order to uh, you know, find any kind of interesting connectors inside this device is I had to open it up. So we are going to need a basic set of tools they don't have to be flashy. They don't have to be expensive like the set I have here. Uh, this is only 75 bucks for this iFixit kit. You get all these screwdrivers, all these bits. You get a pry tool. Uh, you can see this one I have abused and broken, uh, but they're actually designed to do that. They're, they're designed to break instead of uh, breaking your device first. And so, uh, this iFixit toolkit is going to have all the screwdriver bits you need. It's also going to come with some uh, tweezers, which are going to be helpful later if you do uh, chip desoldering, which is not covered in this video. Um, and it's going to have some other nice stuff for you. Um, that is really important because you are going to need to get into these devices in order to access the PCBs. So that is the first thing is a basic set of tools. And again, it doesn't have to be as fancy as this. You can go and find something cheaper, but I really like the iFixit kit. 
And so that's the first item on my list. And then the second item, which I mentioned before, is a multimeter. And I have the tiniest and the crappiest multimeter here. I have several multimeters, but this multimeter, uh, I, I actually got this overseas, so I don't know what this would be in US dollars, but I imagine it was like, you know, in the 10 to $20 range for this multimeter, right? It's not going to win any, you know, any shootouts with, uh, with any other multimeters, but it has the two functions that we need as hardware hackers uh, if we're just doing some basics, the basics of hardware hacking. And that is we need, we need the, the continuity mode. And so here we can probe around and we can find ground planes. Uh, uh, throughout the device and I can see I can probe this UART connector which is really hard to see but there are four pins here and then this one is the ground pin now in this device it's so easy because it's actually labeled the UART interface but I can I can find the ground pin and I can do that and then the other thing that we're gonna do when you turn the device on is we're going to measure voltages and so this is super helpful because I can measure voltages. Okay, so this is the voltage. This is the the VCC pin on the UART connector, and I'm getting 3.3 volts. And I can touch to the TX pin, and hopefully, oh, there you can see that voltage fluctuation that's occurring there. And that is because there is a digital signal that is going between you know zero and 3.3 volts. Uh, on that line and it's transmitting data and so we can use even this crappy multimeter to figure out which pins are likely to be our transmit pin and then we can kind of do some other deductive reasoning to figure out what the other pins are not going to go into that in this video but this really bad multimeter is able to do it so you don't need anything that is expensive in the multimeter domain that's the second tool Next, once we find a UART interface like that, we need a way to connect up to it with our computer. And that's where this cable comes in. So this is a USB to 3.3 volt UART connector. And so that's really important. Uh, and we measured this interface. 3.3 volt UART is the most common interface that you're going to find on devices like this. Sometimes you'll find, you know, really weird situations where you have 1.8 volts or, you know, I've seen like a 2.5 volt UART before. But most of the time, this cable is going to get the job done for you. And this is like, you know, 15 to 20 bucks for this cable. And then you're also going to want to get some of these jumper wires that you can get for like five bucks for a whole box of them. They'll have all the combinations of, you know, male, the female, and all, all, all those combos. And so you'll just get a big mess of these wires, which is going to be helpful for connecting to those interfaces like that. And then the next thing that I'm going to want, let's say that they didn't have, I can kind of show you here. They didn't have these pins populated. Let's say there were just holes in the board where, where uh, this pin header is, and I needed to solder onto here. Well, that's when I need to step into the realm of getting a soldering iron. And so there are a lot of good options. Uh, in, in our second half of the video, we're going to kind of go through an Amazon shopping cart where I show uh, a really good cheap soldering iron that I do not have here and I do not own, but I have tried out from multiple other people that have the uh, pine sill. Uh, it's like a USB-C powered uh, soldering iron and it's very, very good for what you pay for it. Now, this is my, is my Hacko FX951. This is my favorite soldering iron and I love it. And so we do need some kind of soldering iron and we need some solder. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything amazing, but we do want lead, you know, an alloy, a lead alloy solder. And so with that, we then would be able to say, okay, let's say these pins weren't on here. I could, I could take these wires and I could plug them in to there and I could solder them in place so that I can get a UR connection. And then the very last tool, sounds kind of silly, but uh, is a pair of wire strippers. 
Uh, nothing crazy. You just need to be able to strip wires. If you are doing a bunch of soldering work, that's going to be very helpful. So that is what I have over on the bench in terms of five tools that will get you started. Now you will encounter things when you're on your hardware hacking journey, you might want to extract some firmware. You might need a new, you're going to need a new tool for that. You might need to do voltage glitching. You might need to, uh, you know, measure digital signals and, and, to, and in a way that you can decode them with a logic analyzer. You're going to need some more tooling for that, but this is just to get you started into this world of hardware hacking with the basics. And I believe hunting for UART on these Linux-based devices is going to be the best place to start. So let's now go over to my screen. And we're going to discuss a Amazon shopping cart that I've kind of put together here of eight, you know, items, right? It's, you know, our, our various tools and, and our device target. That would be a, just like a good kit to put this together and this would help you get started. So like I said, uh, this is a brand of Wi-Fi router that is just, you know, it, it's Chinese knockoff equipment. It's, it's, not, it's not high quality. It kind of works. And you're definitely going to find exposed UART interfaces uh, and firmware that's easy to extract and all, all, all that stuff. You're gonna, this is a good target for a beginner. And it's really cheap. So even a brand new one of these devices you can get for $23, that's great. Um, and, and I mean, cause if you're going and buying something used, you're probably like, you're probably going to pay the same amount. So might as well get a new device. So once you get your device, we need the tool set. Like I said, this is the, uh, I fix it, you know, pro tool kit. You get, um, you get some of those, uh, tweezers, you get these different pry tools again, uh, that I've abused over the years. Some of them I've lost or they've just completely broken because, I abuse my tools, and so uh, this is a really good toolkit. But there are you, you can probably pay half and, and still get a decent uh, screwdriver set and some other pry tools out there. This is just kind of one of the best kits out, out out there that I think you can get. Here is the uh, I believe this is the the one I have. Oh, nice, cool. I, okay, so I did actually match that up. Uh, that was just totally random. This is a extremely cheap multimeter. Okay, it's like thirty two bucks. Um, I definitely got it for cheaper in Asia if you can go to some of those electronics malls. But it's not winning any awards, but this does what we want, right? If you're an electrical engineer, you can just, you know, close your ears uh, during this part. But we actually don't care about the precision uh, that we're measuring our voltages at when we're doing hardware hacking most of the time. There, there, are, there is some time where, where that is important, but not as a beginner. So next thing, uh, here we can see, here's one of these 3.3 volt UART to USB cables. Um, pretty straightforward, cheap, and this is going, I use, I use these cables all the time. I, I, keep, I keep a couple of them around all over the place. Very easy, and then you just want some of the jumper wires to kind of pair with that, or if you need to uh, solder, you know, different things together for whatever purpose. These jumper wires are great, uh, and they're really cheap. So you can just use them and abuse them. Uh, and then here is the soldering iron. Like I said, I do not personally own this soldering iron, but I've used it at multiple conferences. And that is what a lot of people use these for. Uh, even if you graduate one day to your nice, you know, bench top soldering iron and a really nice, you know, other equipment, it's nice to have this cheaper equipment to take to conferences. But then you don't care if it's lost or stolen or damaged or whatever. Um, but this iron, again, it powers over USB-C. You can literally like power it from your laptop. Uh, I think it has power supplies where it can provide, you know, a little bit more juice, but very good for what for the $40 you're getting out of this device. And uh, you're going to be able to get started soldering. Then you need some solder. Uh, for again, hardware hacking purposes, we really are not picky with what kind of solder we're going to use. Uh, some people might be, but I'm not. So you need, but you need some solder. And then it's kind of dumb, but 
you do need wire you do need a set of wire cutters and i don't know any like kit out there that combines all those different screwdriver types and a set of wire cutters otherwise i would just find a kit that has all that stuff but that's kind of one of those extra items that you're going to eventually need otherwise you're just going to end up with a knife trying to like strip the strip the cover off a wire and that's not going to be fun so uh, when we put all this in a shopping cart uh, we can see that the grand total is uh, 225 bucks which may be tough on some people's budgets and i acknowledge that i acknowledge that hardware hacking there is a barrier to entry that doesn't exist necessarily in like web hacking or network hacking where uh th th this all kind of assumes that you already have some kind of a computer right and so it's what do you need in addition to just having a computer well you are going to need some stuff and it's going to cost some money most of the time but this is a pretty approachable amount of money you know get, get given what you're getting into and it's going to set you in the right direction it's going to give you a bunch of tools that you can use for a short to medium maybe even long term and it's going to also show you probably where you need to get new tools and so yeah that is the last thing that i want to discuss in this video you really have to avoid the temptation to just run out and buy new tools because you, that you, you, again because you think that that's gonna just make you a better hardware hacker right you should again like i said the, the the first thing i said to buy was not a tool it was a device focus on the target that you're hacking and then when you have a problem that you can't solve but you find a tool that can help you solve the problem or it helps you do it faster than your current solution or better or cheaper, whatever. It, it does it better. Uh, then you consider buying that tool. But you should let your mission, what you're trying to do, dictate your tools, not the other way around. And that is all I have for you. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, give me feedback down in the comments. Let me know if you think there's anything I missed in my list. That's a big one. Also, if there's any items that you would switch out if you have any brand recommendations within the categories within those five uh, tool categories and uh, yeah continue to share this video thank you have a good day